uh, I think I think the first time everyone speaks. So Joyce, you know, um, the latest cover story stage is set for banking M&As or banking mergers. Why was the story important for DH this week? I think uh, we decided to look into the story mm -hmm. because a few factors, a lot of things have been happening in the banking arena when it comes to um, shareholding changes and all that. I think that was first sparked off with Alliance Financial Group seeing a shareholding change at the top mm -hmm. and then following that you see uh, some news coming up about EMMB holdings and all that. But mm -hmm. shareholding aside, mm -hmm. there's also the tougher operating environment currently yeah. uh, that has affected a lot of businesses and mm -hmm. that include banks mm -hmm. and I think for banks their profits have uh, eroded quite a bit, you know. Right. The margins have compressed and um, I think because of that, they have to look at cost cutting and mm -hmm. uh, on top of that, capital requirements have mm -hmm. gotten a lot more stricter for banks. Right. So a lot of factors, if you package all that together, it would be a survival of a fittest uh, when right. it comes to that, that tougher operating landscape. So I think we feel that the stage is set Mm -hmm. for a bank M&A to happen. Right, yeah. now in the last five years, we have not seen any successful merger. Why was it the case? Okay, the last uh, successful banking M&A that happened mm -hmm. uh, was in 2011 where Hong Leong Bank acquired Eon Capital uh, successfully, yeah. right? The assets and liabilities. Since then, there has been a lot of talk mm -hmm. between, you know, CMB, RHB, MBSB, mm -hmm. Maybank, EIMB, even uh, MBSB and uh, Bank Mamalat, you know. So there have been a lot of talks, but when it has not reached the finishing line, I think there are a few factors, price, right? right? I think when CMB, uh, RHB and MBSB went into talks mm -hmm. at that time, it was quite going quite well, but then the economy turned. Right. You know, things turned so fast and it went, the economy went down so bad, not down, uh, but you know, the environment got so much tougher that I think that uh, all three of them looked at the numbers and they saw that, you know, the synergies that they, they wanted to achieve from the merger, I think the synergies that they were hoping to achieve from the merger was one billion, right. as much as one billion. But when the environment turned, the landscape got tougher, mm -hmm. don't think they were able to achieve that kind of synergies then. So I think that's why they, they all three decided that it was best to walk away, which I think banking analysts Today, when I talked to them mm -hmm. and I was working on this story, mm -hmm. they said they may have dodged a bullet. Nah. Then they, they, they didn't go ahead with it. So I think when it comes to banking mergers, synergies must be there. True. So yeah, so I think that is why, that is also why the stage is set because there might be a lot of synergies now between if you find the right partner, right, right. you can be stronger together moving forward in this tougher operating environment. So I think that is why a lot of people are also, if I talk to banking analysts, bankers, M&A seems to be quite hot. Uh, there were speculations that some banks in Malaysia are also up for m and so You mentioned earlier um, AMB and also Tansu Azman Hashim planning to sell the stakes and so on and also ANZ, right? Uh, mm -hmm. What's happening in, in that space? In I mean, there's a lot of speculation that the Aussies might want to exit right. the AMB investment but uh, they have mentioned last week that uh, in a Financial Times article, right, right that uh, they are in no rush to sell, mm -hmm. right? So of course, I think for any stake in any bank, mm -hmm. if the price is right, why not, mm -hmm. right? I mean, yeah, I mean, look at even regionally, if you track uh, in Hong Kong, mm -hmm. um, Singapore's OCBC acquired a bank in Hong Kong right. in 2014. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but you can see from the price, I think the price was about uh, 6 billion that translated to about 1.77 times price to go. Right. That price compared to the other Hong Kong banks that sold, I think in 2008 a bank was sold, Wing Lung was sold for 2.9 percent, and 2001 another Hong Kong bank was sold for 3.3 times price to go. This was uh, Kwek Ling Chan's Guaco Group's uh, Daoheng Bank was sold mm. to DBS. The price has come down a bit. Yeah, because, down, right? yeah because the landscape is tough. Right. Running a bank right now is not the same as last time. The, the returns are not the same. You can see the ROEs have come down mm -hmm. for banks across the board, right? RHB's Group Managing Director, mm -hmm. Dato Karu Saleh, mm -hmm. has mentioned, uh, he responded to our question for the, right. for the story, right. and uh, he mentioned that he believes that any M&A mm -hmm. should be market-driven mm -hmm. and there should be um, value. It has to have value for all parties involved. Mm -hmm. And I think that's good. That's a good point that he pointed out. You know, you can't just have M&A because you know you don't go bigger but it doesn't make sense for another party right, right. and uh, CIMB's uh, Tengku Dato Zafro, the group 
CEO. Uh, he also wrote in and responded to our, our question for this story and he mentioned that um, CMB, they are focused on uh, building their own business. Actually, RHB also mentioned that they are focused on building their own business, right? So I, I, I see where they're coming from. They don't want to be distracted from the noise outside, right. which is good. Uh, but then uh, Zafu did mention that um, they want to strengthen their capital, reduce costs, mm -hmm. and they want to grow the business organically. Mm -hmm. Of course, if there are any group opportunities, as and when they arise, they will consider as well. Like he won't write that off. So I think that's fair. Well, Joy, you know, last week I believe that AB Group CEO Dr. Suleiman also wrote to you that the digital age has been disruptive for banks and you know with the emergence of fintech or the financial technology, and I quote him. So the survival of the banks hinges on how relevant they are to their consumers and I think that this is a fair statement you know, given the fact that this technology has emerged and you know, uh, enabled the banking system to all. For more on the story, pick up a copy of The Edge Weekly at all good newsstands.